Hello again. Back to advanced maintenance planning, scheduling, and work control. This is video number 11. We will continue as we following the six phases of maintenance, planning, scheduling, and work control. Let us first start with our hadith number 11. Al Hassan ibn Ali reported the messenger of Allah peace and the blessing be upon him said leave what make you doubt for what does not make you doubt verily trust bring peace of mind and falsehood spread doubt عن أبي محمد الحسن بن علي بن أبي طالب صبت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وريحانته رضي الله عنهما قال حفظتم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم دع ما يريبك إلى ما لا يريبك Okay Now let us go for our fifth stage of maintenance planning and scheduling and work control this video will stress on history recording and documentation why we need history recording and documentation we need history about the equipment we need data about the equipment that will help us to figure out if we are applying, if we are proceeding in the best maintenance practice, what has been done day to day, how to update our information and our history on a real time basis, as opposed to relying on Mr. Electrician or the memory of our uh, technician or our workers. Of course, there will be a big value added, a big benefit if we able to document this information instead of re uh, relying on human being memory. Recording maintenance data over time. It give us a photo, wide spread photo, and more information about the life of the machine. We will use this data later on for the last stage, which is analysis and the reporting, and accordingly get the feedback. What data, what information we need to document? We need to know. If we estimate certain uh, uh, task, how actually it took and to compare our estimation against the actual task it took to uh, control our either our planning, our estimation, or to control our execution. We, not, we need to know if our work was requiring additional material which was not initially reported in our plan. We also wish to know some information about the sequence or the steps or the procedure we been planned compared with what be in actual. We need also to know some uh, feedback and the comments about our uh, outsourcing or our contractor or our third party uh, regarding uh, if we have outsourcing for scaffolding or for heavy equipment or for cranes or for uh, even extra labors and extra workers so we need to know feedback about and their comments about the uh, execution and uh, about the uh, our planning and estimation uh, sometimes our maintenance team face a problem of delaying the handover of the equipment to maintenance uh, most of the time operation people 
uh, not uh, appreciate handing over the equipment for maintenance. They wish to keep it most of the time in, uh, in operation. So also that will be reported and will be uh, documented so we can handle these issues later on whenever it is, uh, it is happening. Uh, we need to know if the isolation was proper or improper isolation procedures and the actions through our feedback from our technician and our maintenance workers. Through the feedback, our team, our maintenance team will uh, uh, report the number of failures and we use this number of failures later on for reliability analysis and for uh, for example, Pareto analysis to know that uh, 20, 20 percentage of our failures which create 80 percentage of our suffer and our complain. Uh, since we know the number of failures, then we can apply root cause uh, failure analysis for those uh, repeated failures and uh, uh, mostly uh, re reoccurred failures most of the time. Uh, also, we need to know the cost associated with those failure, how much it, uh, it costs, how much we pay for those failures. So we can uh, be in a good position to judge and to, to take decision about the uh, modification or uh, uh, developing some alternative or some policies or some uh, techniques or some technology uh, based on this uh, cost. Uh, also, any safety or environmental implication associated with these failures also will be reported. Uh, uh, the, the list is, 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 is huge. Actually, we can add additional benefits uh, what we need to information about this documentation. Uh, again, this documentation and this uh, recording of the feedback create an efficient CMMS or whatever uh, computer maintenance management system we are using, uh, SAP or Maximo or whatever. Uh, so uh, it is part of the effectiveness of our system. So we can measure the effectiveness of our system by answering these questions. Uh, uh, how many work orders we have do we create enough backlog to keep our people busy most of the time, how many failures we had for certain uh, type of assets or equipment, and what type of these failures, how much labor hours uh, we are spending on which type of asset categories, for example, uh, uh, how many hours we spend for static equipment, how many hours we spend for rotating equipment, how many hours we spend for mechanical equipment. So we can plan our resources distribution and allocation. Uh, which are my critical assets? Which assets are considered as a critical assets regarding uh, uh, the number of failures, the consequence of failures, the cost which it, uh, it required uh, f that for that particular asset, all this information will be answered. Also, we can know where we are spending the most amount of maintenance budget on which asset, on which area, on which uh, 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 terrain, on which section, on which uh, di sectors of our plant. Uh, what is the percentage of money we are spending on emergency, for example, compared with how much we spend on planning or predictive or uh, time-based maintenance? Uh, uh, this also gives us, again, another KBI important indication. Unfortunately, most of this information, most of these items are missing from history record in our database, in our most CMM system. If we refer to most of our CMM system, we rarely find the answer to these questions. Who is responsible for uh, uh, providing this uh, missing data and uh, make sure we capture all this data? Of course, uh, it is best to be documented by the same workers, the same technician, the same personnel who perform the maintenance, who do the maintenance. This is the best scenario. However, uh, this person, this technician time, 
uh, he most of the time busy, he most of the time involved in uh, reactive maintenance and emergency work, he might not find the time to report and document this uh, type of uh, items or this type of information. He doesn't has time to report these details. Uh, so this is a problem we are facing actually. Uh, let us have a sample of one of the recording uh, uh, in one of our uh, plant. When we review the history and the recording and the feedback we got uh, from one asset, we get this uh, feedback. This is the date valve leaked and this is the date valve repaired. Of course, this documentation, this feedback never answer any one of the questions we mentioned before or never provide the required information we required before or we need to know before. It does not in indicate this brief, very short and uh, uh, less important feedback or inefficient feedback does not indicate what was done during that repair of that leakage valve or that leakage or that uh, damaged valve. It doesn't indicate anything about what actually done. What was the cause of that failure? What the consequence of that failure? How much it took to repair? How much it, uh, it, it consumed from our budget? Uh, it doesn't indicate whether uh, our estimation was uh, reasonable or was in match with the actual estimation, either estimation of time or estimation of cost or estimation of resources. Uh, it doesn't indicate if our uh, if there is even a procedures and uh, uh, what procedure was required, uh, if isolation was required or if. Uh, uh, external resources was required or uh, additional craft or additional skills was required. It doesn't mention anything. So whenever we face a similar situation later on, we will again uh, do the same uh, uh, behavior and we will proceed without having any feedback or any information. It doesn't even give us uh, if the spare part required, uh, what the spare part was required, uh, or was it available, or uh, was it uh, compatible, or whatever. Uh, what about safety uh, and uh, isolation and lookout arrangement? Was it uh, proper, or was it uh, uh, sufficient, or uh, it, it, it was not there and it delayed the repair itself? Uh, it doesn't indicate what type of failure, what fa what type of failure modes, what is the code of failure, what is the cause of failure. It doesn't give any answer to these questions. Uh, it doesn't even give a picture uh, and uh, uh, prediction of uh, of the future for that uh, particular uh, item. Was it required uh, a, a near future action and a near future uh, repair or not? Well, what about other resources or outside surface? Was it sufficient? Was it required? Was it delayed? Was it fit our needs? Was it provide the skills we required? What about special tools? Was it provided? Was it required? Or any other resources or any feedback or any information about whatever other resources was being involved in that task or in that repair. Benefits of efficient documentation of the work task. It can provide long-term cost reduction. It can provide work experience through this documentation. It can create expert system instead of the memory of technician or a memory of human being instead of Mr. Electrician we have our own database and our own files and the documentation. It can be used later on for bid specification for procurements of uh, other 
sort uh, other uh, assets or other equipment or material or spare part our bill specification can be better written based on this information and based on that feedback identify the problem and identify any solution for these uh, problems later on it will require the least repair time and of course that will reflect on cost saving because uh, uh, since we have this experience already documented we will use it later on for whenever the same failure or same repair will required later on so we uh, uh, get beneficial out of this information and of course it will reflect on our uh, behavior and our feedback Uh, it also minimizes the uh, mistakes we might do in the further repair whenever it required. And we will also make sure that the equipment, the system, or the asset will restart probably after doing that uh, maintenance or doing that repair. History and the uh, key, key performance indicator, KBI, uh, also will be utilize this information and this information and this KBI will be posted among our people uh, for all to see and that will also have another additional benefits if a KBI is not showing the positive results or does not satisfy our interest or our needs and our standard then we will take action maintenance team will take action through discussion through meeting uh, and they may be scheduled for uh, the next uh, day whenever it is required based on this kbi and based on this data whenever the same or similar task or similar repair will be needed in the future to be performed in the future our workers and technician can sprint can print and update a copy of the work order which has been closed including all this type of valuable information and details it will improve the quality of our maintenance work it will improve and minimize the mistakes the delay in restarting managing our spare parts, managing and our resources, managing our, our outsourcing and third part requirements. Also, it will help our supervisors to improve supervision of the crew at the job location and at the job sites. It improves maintenance management because our management will be able to get report and the feedback and the KBIs about the performance and based on that they will take informed action rather than taking action based on uh, nothing uh, if we have a customers so once our maintenance performance will be improved our production will be also improved and it will reflect on our customer relations and the client satisfaction it minimizes the maintenance maintenance delay since we are preparing expert system since we have our feedback we will create less delay in our maintenance tasks and maintenance activity it also that will reflect on productivity of our people and the productivity of our maintenance actions let us take example of a real example of the benefit of efficient documentation assuming we have a repair task which was planned for uh, 12 hours how that time can be reduced by having that proper documentation and feedback let us be very conservative and assuming that we only save 10 percentage out of that 12 hours which means 1.2 hours if that equipment has one thousand dollar as downtime cost if the equipment that has loss of 1000 for every hour it is down this is what we call downtime cost per hour 
So how much this 1.2 will represent in dollar wise? It will represent $1,200 for every one repair. What we are doing now here, we are translating our technical term into the management languages. As you know, we have different languages spoken in an industry. One of the uh, language is the technical people language, and the other language is the management language. Management prefer to use uh, dollar language or cost wise language. So now we are turning or translating that technical issue, technical information about the documentation to uh, dollar wise. So we translate this saving into money now so we can explore the benefit to the management about that saving. Assuming that this typical uh, failure will uh, repeat it 10 times uh, every year as an average, so the annual saving would be $12,000 for that particular uh, repair or for that particular failures. How long it takes to document, how long it takes, how much it costs to, to save this uh, benefit or to create that saving. Uh, assuming that documentation will take just half an hour at an estimated salary of uh, uh, $5, assuming $10 per hour. So half an hour will cost us only $5 to document that task. So this is what we're going to pay. Uh, to save this $12,000. Uh, the net saving in that case will be the sum we save minus the what how much we we spend to document. Uh, documenting it 10 times per year, every time we will cost five only $5 to document this task. So the net saving will be almost $11,950 only for one failure, for one work, for one repair. Of course, over the longer term, if we consider, if we apply this uh, uh, over different work, different repair, the cost saving would be more than be for the extra technician who take half an hour to document as a time to document that work order or that creating that feedback. Even alone, this task may seem like a small saving. Uh, if we are talking about $12,000 or $11,000, it might seem small saving, but combined with hundreds and thousands of tasks, the saving can be huge, can be increased. Another hidden benefit of uh, documentation, actually, uh, hidden because it is not measured by dollar-wise. Uh, 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 the component assume if we if we repair the equipment without documentation, we assume the system will restart probably uh, properly after the uh, lockout is uh, cleared or after the repair is uh, completed. However, unfortunately, with no documentation, with no expert system, with no feedback, with no not knowing any information about. Uh, the previous repair of that particular uh, task, the system is least likely to restart probably. It might not restart it probably, it might need to re, uh, re uh, do the repair again or uh, to uh, readjust something or to dismantle something and to do it again and again. Uh, so this is again another issue. The, that, the technical data entry technician or the person who do this uh, documentation can also be trained, he will be trained, he will be practicing this process and through these practices uh, uh, by uploading the experience or the, uh, the capturing the feedback and this information, uh, that person will get a, a, a good experience and he will able to translate this feedback into cause and effect chain. He will uh, create a sort of why this fail, failure happened, why this valve failed because of that blockage, why this blockage because of that accumulation of skills and uh, 
uh, mud and uh, uh, dirty. Uh, why this uh, accumulation? Or because of this uh, uh, strainer or whatever was not uh, acting properly. So this is a sort of what we mean by cause and effect chain. And that cause and effect chain actually uh, give uh, an explanation for the malfunction and the root cause of that malfunction. So if we able to create this cause and effect chain, uh, we will be able to eliminate the root cause instead of dealing with the symptom. So based on this uh, introduction about the benefit uh, of work or documentation, how we can implement that work or documentation in an efficient way? Uh, it can be implemented in different way actually. There is no standard approach to, uh, to be recommended, but every company uh, has its own uh, way. Uh, uh, some companies may rely on the maintenance supervisor to document maintenance to task. Some companies may rely on the technician who is doing the repair himself to do that documentation. Uh, maintenance supervisor, unfortunately, are often too heavily tasked to make this uh, uh, action, to make that documentation. Uh, uh, if we do, if they do it, they, they will risk the productivity. They will lose their main role and the main uh, 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 coaching and the main, their main super, supervision on the front line. So how we can handle a situation like this? One, one uh, recommendation, one solution is to assign one technician to uh, uh, allocate one technician dedicated to act as a technical data entry. So this is his, uh, his, this is his position. It, it, he will be uh, take this position uh, under the name of uh, technical data entry. His role is just to, uh, uh, to upload this feedback and this documentation in our system. Whatever uh, the, the title, whatever the name, doesn't matter. Uh, our ultimate objective is to document the maintenance task and to uh, not losing any information during the repair. So whatever uh, other solution, that could be one solution, uh, doesn't matter what solution, whatever other solution are uh, recommended and accepted as far as uh, it is enables us to have and to capture all this documentation through the work order documentation and the feedback. Uh, as we mentioned here before, it will uh, maintain supervisor are heavily tasked. What do we mean by heavily tasked? Heavily tasked, uh, let us uh, 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 focus on that why supervisor are heavily tasked and maybe he is not the proper choice to be assigned and to be involved in this documentation. Supervisor responsibility should include all this information, should be include all these duties. He should identify the cause of repeated failure. He should ensure, ensure that all the data, he coaching and managing the accuracy of the data and make sure that the task uh, and the work are completed and the data was entered accurately in our system, whatever system we are using. He should also ensure feedback to both the planner and the scheduling team to maximize efficiency in the future. As you see here from this rule of the uh, supervisor, he is also involved but not directly invol involved in the data entry. He will uh, monitoring the process of data entry he will validate the work order close out, including or he will not validate the closing of the work order unless these data are uh, completed and being entered uh, accurately. He should validate that all work from the previous day, day to day, is accounted for by the work order. He should ensure that the work order information is accurate before any work order, before closing any work order, he should make sure that the information is completed and accurate and none of this information are missed. Uh, if there is any problem with this work order uh, information, uh, the maintenance technician should hold a meeting for a few minutes before the end of the shift or end of the day 
to ensure that uh, information is corrected and that the maintenance technician know why they uh, 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 need to be uh, changed based on the KPI, based on the analysis of this information. Why do why we do less history recording and documentation in many of our companies, we are uh, not good in history recording and documentation. Why we are do recommend less recommendation? Maybe because lack of resources and knowledge, we are not knowledgeable about the benefit of that documentation. So we don't care about this documentation. Maybe because lack of our technician skill, they are not uh, skilled enough. They are not aware about database, they don't, are not aware about files and reporting and analysis and the KPI. Uh, people on the shop floor don't know why they are entering the data. They might not be uh, trained and be not being uh, uh, informed and not be learned why we need this data and how the data can be used. What is the benefit of these data? What is why this data is important in making information and to make informed decision and to take the proper action? Uh, it may be because of lack of understanding on how that data can be used. He might not be aware about the benefit of these data. A proper component hierarchy does not exist. Uh, it means the component what is belong to which uh, hierarchy system we have hierarchy system is not there or is not accurate so he is not able to refer the sub component to, to the uh, upper level component or to the uh, further component so that make it very difficult to analyze the data because we will lose the uh, hierarchy of the equipment companies have other uh, priorities rather than in maintenance or rather than KBI or rather than documentation. Uh, uh, they more they are maybe more uh, uh, more important more in, uh, interest in production. They are they may are in, engaged in production uh, satisfying the production target uh, or uh, reduction in budget or uh, budget issue and so on. So they don't very much care about, they don't put this issue among their high uh, priority. They uh, rely on people experience rather than rely on their database and their documentation system. But people experience might not be stable. They might move, they might uh, lose this experience uh, one day so they will be uh, in, a, in a problem whenever the uh, one of these experienced people leave or uh, retired or uh, uh, shifted to another company or another uh, uh, location and or being in vacation or sick leave or whatever it is. Why we do this history recording? Again, same question, continuing answering this question. Our whole data is big. Uh, we have many, many equipment, many, many uh, locations and the trains and our uh, companies and our factory are huge. And it grows over time, uh, by the time our data grows very much and the data processing becomes difficult to deal with this data and deal with this documentation. Uh, Unfortunately, sub application has or CMMM is computer maintenance management system application has thousand and thousand of tables. It become hard and difficult for uh, using these data and for uh, dealing with these data and for averaging uh, these data. So the users will uh, will the, the 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 average users or the low skill users, especially the low computer users will find it difficult to understand and to deal with these tables and with this information. Unfortunately, this type of CMM system, for example, SAB, is not really designed for a comprehensive uh, enterprise asset management analysis. It's not good for this type of 
thousand tables and information. It's not best for data analysis. It need to be integrated with some other system or with other some simple uh, spreadsheet system. Uh, and accordingly, most of these application do not have the sophisticated in the way the data is visualized or presented. Most of these uh, other system like spreadsheet are not very sophisticated like that SAP system. Thank you and uh, see you inshallah in the next uh, video. Just we ask you to make dua. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم اجعل هذا العمل خالصا لوجهك الكريم ونلقاكم إن شاء الله في الفيديو القادم بإذن الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته